Good morning, folks. Say goodbye to the solar flare maker. Big sunspots heading out of view into the far side of the sun after the earth facing quiet forced him to wait until the limb to fire. We've got an extra long news this morning so we can hit everything, including the weather, a dark matter fumble, a strange event in Utah, the one-week warning for Jeffrey Love and the USGS, and some housekeeping to make sure we're all on the same page. Let's begin our analysis, as always, over at spaceweathernews.com. Last day on our star was utterly calm. Big coronal holes steal your attention as the bright active region turns away. A couple more incoming on the left down south, but incoming on the north there is a massive plasma filament, hundreds of thousands of kilometers long, and it's our top eruption threat entering this week. Solar flaring is on the decline as expected with the big sunspot group departing. Doubt we'll get another M flare for a minute. We've got a blank sun. Solar wind does not appear to be that intense, but late afternoon brought a blazing hot stream of particles that was only slightly dense and fast, but also twisted the phi angle of the solar wind delivering global disruptions and a geomagnetic storm at the lowest level. Magnetic field shows the disruption around 2100 UTC, and the low energy particle flux appears to be showing the same timing of the impact. Folks, there have been small coronal holes on the disk for a couple of days, but you can see it's just one controlling IMF source. Those are the powerful southern fields, and they are set to face Earth over the coming day and a half. You take that, the phi angle shifts in the solar wind, and longitudinal coupling potential from the CMEs over this past weekend, and we've got an earthquake warning. Looking at the disaster app testing for the last four weeks shows the peak that led to the New Zealand quakes about two weeks ago only had one six-pointer in the down ramp since then as it stutter stepped but now we are going back up quake watch really ramps up the early part of this week i think wall thornhill has been having daydreams about this for years no dark matter evidence at that subterranean detection site they'll be revamping the project to the tune of a fifty million dollar upgrade the attempts of the mainstream to ignore the more elemental electrical aspects of dark matter and dark energy has been one of the most entertaining parts of science the last decade. From the annals of the weird, this green foam came up from beneath a Utah town this weekend, and while it is likely due to the anti-moss foams they use in the area, the waterway was recently shut down due to toxic algae. Officials say there is no chance it came up with the foam. From weird to weird, the Russian craters with burn marks have been quite the mystery, but now scientists are pretty sure they are exploded methane bubbles from underground. Given how far north these are, the trigger is more likely to be penetrating energetic particles than a severe lightning strike to the ground. Let's come to the weather where a low in the northeast will drag that convergence back into the Midwest and the plains again. Severe weather tonight, and especially for those areas where available potential energy reaches those dark reds could see hail, even a tornado get tossed up on the scoreboard. Let's jump to South Africa. Many of you saw that Peru record cold story yesterday on Ice Age Now. Well, Ninja and Yolandi were starting to feel left out down there and said, let it snow. One expected to continue today, as you can see. And it has been the case the last few days that the southern areas here are catching the Antarctic lows and their convergence lines should be the same. Eyes open New Zealand and Tasmania. Folks, it's been reposted thousands of times. Our challenge to the U.S. government earthquake group, specifically to Jeffrey Love, who says the sun isn't involved in earthquakes. Well, you don't have to go Googling the video if you've missed it. Spaceweathernews.com slash challenge can also be found at that link there on the homepage. It has our challenge and a number of other videos on there. Newcomers are encouraged to watch the layman's version, but observers who know a bit more about the sun may be able to get away with the intermediate one. We've been patient, played it by the book at first, but we've been ignored and insulted the whole way. A response is now warranted in my email box by the end of the month, Mr. Love, or slightly more fun measures may also be warranted. Looking to keep up with what's going on? Our Facebook page is called the Mobile Observatory Project, and it's linked for you below. And if you want to find the personal page, that's my little one on the front photo there. If you want to get in touch, please use the contact page at suspiciousobservers.org. It will make sure your message gets where it needs to go. Always better than messaging on Facebook or Twitter, which, by the way, is Ben at the Real S0S. It's where all alerts are coming until the disaster prediction app is ready.
It's the birthday week for SuspiciousObservers.org, and all we really want this year is an email from Jeffrey Love. I'll settle for the universe's continued snitching on flawed science. We've got more weather here, followed by shots of our star to close. It's 4 a.m. on the north end of the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.